Hi everybody, it's Vu. We, in a previous video, we edited a articulated model in the Medit Model Viewer application. And now it's time to take this articulated model, export it as an STL file, and then print it in our 3D printer. To do that, we need to first export the file. So in the file viewer here, we see the various files that are available. We're going to go ahead and click this export icon right here. Click it. You don't actually have to hit file viewer first, by the way. I just wanted to show you what was there. Uh, it is exporting to a base folder. And within that base folder, it's going to make a subfolder called this. It's usually the case number and the name of the patient. Uh, the CAD type is not important in this application. We're going to keep the choice at STL. Uh, we're going to keep the image at JPEG, not that we have any images to export this time around. We're going to go ahead and click the export button down here. And now because I've done this before, it's going to ask me if I want to overwrite what's already in the folder or if I want to make a whole new folder. The safer choice is the second one, make a new folder. Go ahead and hit apply. And now it's going to ask me if I want to open the folder containing the exported file. I think that's a great idea. Let's go ahead and click that. And you will see in our folder we have a few files here. I wanted to go over each one just so you're familiar with them. The files all start with the case number as well as the patient's name and then what it is, the lower jaw. Occlusion first is their first bite reg. We don't actually need that. Occlusion second is their second bite reg. So one will be the left and one will be the right bite scan. We don't need either of those to print our models today. The fourth one is the upper jaw model. And again, these are just meshes. So if we were to double click and look at them, uh, these are just the scan meshes. You can see there, uh, there's not much to them. And before I forget, one thing I do to make sure I can quickly look at the models, you'll notice I have a 3D Builder icon in. That's because when I did it is I right clicked the, uh, I right clicked the STL file. I hit open with, and then I hit choose another app. You can pick an app here. Normally it would be set to Rayware since you installed Rayware, but I'm gonna pick 3D Builder, check always open, and that will allow me to quickly open any STL file by double clicking it. This lets me look at the file real quick to see if I like it. If I hit import here, it's gonna run a little scan and it's gonna tell me in the lower right hand corner that one of the objects may be invalid to find, meaning there's a hole in it. You can click to repair it. I'm not gonna do that in this case. Uh, we don't need to because Rayware will do that for us. The next thing we're gonna do is look at the model builder base and manable. These are the two files that we actually need you'll see that one is the lower and the other one is the upper. These should look familiar to you because we just made them. Now we're gonna go ahead and open our Rayware slicer program. Rayware is the slicer used for Sprint Ray printers. I would like to say thanks and a disclosure to Sprint Ray for providing uh, some level of sponsorship for this in terms of testing resin and some support. Let's go ahead and click on our add button here or we can open up our models in the folder right here you can see here that model folder i really like to drag and drop so if we drag our model builder models it will just drop it on i'll drop the other one too you can actually drop them both at once if you like we'll go and click back on rayware and now we're going to go ahead and uh, look and see that it's warning us that there's an integrity issue. Probably there's some small uh, small hole in the mesh somewhere. We're going to hit the fix button and that's going to repair the file. We're going to do the same thing over here as well. It's important to try to fix any small holes because that those can create print failures. Uh, you'll notice here that the upper model has been turned onto its incisal edges and that is not a good situation to print. So what we're gonna do is click on it once to turn it blue. That's with the left button. And once the left button is clicked, or once it's the left button selected and it's turned blue, we're gonna click on the resize icon here on the left. Once you click on the resize icon, then you will go ahead and 
pick the Select Base tool right here. You'll go ahead and move the arrow around until you find the flat base, the flat bottom of the model. Click it, and it will go ahead and automatically drop the model onto that flat surface for printing. There's a little bobble here that I spotted right there uh, inside that lower model. That's probably just going to be absorbed into the 3D print as it goes. I'm not too worried about that one. Uh, if you look on the bottom here, everything is nice and flat. Uh, one thing you have to look out for, I'll just go ahead and intentionally screw this up. Let's undo select base so we can get rid of that tool. Let's say I go ahead and I rotate this model a little bit just to intentionally screw it up. Now you can see there's only a tiny blue dot touching and we don't want that. So again, we can select base, pick the base and click it and we'll drop it back down. We can undo select base to get rid of that tool. This little gyroscope here lets you rotate the model to better fit it in. You need to be careful and make sure that nothing touches the, nothing touches the, uh, no models collide like this, because otherwise it will print as one solid chunk. So very important, check for collisions. Uh, let's go ahead and click the resin selector tool up here. That's the next thing I want to check. We're going to click up here and we're going to make sure the correct printer is selected and it should be. We're going to select the maker of the, uh, mo uh, the model resin. So we're going to pick Sprint Ray model resin in this case. Uh, you can click the update to update resin profiles. Go ahead and look for the model resin that you want to use. We'll say model 2 tan. I usually would generate for Pro 95 printers. I usually recommend printing at the 100 micron setting. If it isn't broke, don't fix it. The 170 will be faster, uh, but it will be rougher. The 50 is smoother, but it will take roughly twice as long to print. I don't think we need it for most applications to get that extra level of smoothness, especially with the pixel toning enabled by default. So if we hit apply, that's going to go ahead and change our resin settings. You'll notice uh, it will up. If you have no models clicked, it will tell you the pr total print time is 52 minutes. You click a model, it'll tell you how much resin each model uses. So this model has 28 milliliters of resin used. This model has 26 milliliters of resin used. Uh, for perspective, uh, a, a bottle of resin uses, you know, a bottle of resin is roughly a thousand milliliters, right? So if you have a 150 dollar bottle of resin divided by roughly a thousand milliliters you will get about 15 cents per milliliter for those of you who are inclined to care about this sort of thing uh, and you multiply that by your 28 milliliters and you'll get 4.2 mil or four four dollars and 20 cents will be the approximate cost of this first model and the other model will be uh, about the same price as well. So that gives you kind of a perspective of what a model costs. Keep in mind that when we made this, we made it, the model extra thick and added base. And so that does consume more. I also didn't hollow it. I don't like hollowing models. I just assume make it. Um, to me, $8 is worth it not to have to stir any stone or use the vibrator or any of that trimming wheel or any of that business. So up to you, you decide what's cost effective for you. I, I would suggest that if you don't need the name engraving though, just build your model bases shorter, uh, include less model, include less in the meta model builder and you'll get a more efficient model. Uh, at this point we would just hit print and then we can just hit the print button here. Now in this case, my printer is busy printing something. And so the print button is grayed out. We can hit Q print to put it in the queue in my case, I'm going to go and close it because I do want to show you one other thing while we're here. Now, let's say we didn't have a model builder um, model. So we're going to go ahead and hit the select each model and hit delete to clear the bed. You can also click file new and that will do the same thing. I'm going to open that folder again that we had for the models and we're going to pick his lower jaw just to show you here, I'll pick the upper jaw. So I'll pick the upper jaw and we'll just control click the lower jaw and drop them both down. 
And once they're both down, we're going to go ahead and look at them. And you can see here it's saying un unrepaired or intraoral scan detected. Scan repair required. And we can hit fix and we'll fix it. I believe this is a pro feature and you need a subscription to do it. Uh, but you can see there it's actually fixed all the minor issues with the model and it's made an extruded base there. We're going to go ahead and click here and you can see here it also says unrepaired intraoral scan. Scan repair required. Hit fix and it's going to also fix it. Now the nice thing about this is it's basically drag, drop, and hit one button and you're ready to print. So it is a considerably faster process than Medit Model Builder was. Uh, but you do have a look, you're trading, what you're trading is a little bit of control. You've noticed also that it doesn't trim the periphery of the model like Medit Model Builder does. Uh, and whether or not that matters to you, I guess it depends on your application. If you're doing this just to do something quick, like a suck down retainer, maybe you don't need, and you're not showing the patient, maybe you don't need to have a fancy trim base or articulated hinges. Maybe you, this is all you need. And so if it is, this is an option for you. Just export the scan files, drag them in, hit fix, and you're ready to print. Uh, this functionality costs you a few bucks extra for the pro subscription model. I think it's well worth it to go ahead and have that functionality in your software. Uh, let's go ahead and you can go ahead and select the model resin if you haven't already. Click the print button and then you're ready to print. So before you hit print, there is a pre-fly checklist that I highly advise you to make sure you check. Uh, one, put on some gloves. Two, check the resin level in your tank. Make sure that the resin is in between the markings, uh, the, the minimum and maximum markings before you print. Second, um, secure the tank, secure the tank and head, the print head. Uh, make sure the print has locked that red knob is locked down and also stir your resin now you can use the little door stop that came with it i prefer to use a rubber cake spatula back when i was using the moon ray i used these these work great too but you want something soft and silicone uh, one other alternative that i use in a pinch is are my plastic putty knives though I'm not going to put that on the slide because I think you need to have a little bit more of a deft touch to use those. Uh, but I like those for a different reason, which I will get into in a different video. But uh, these tools are very handy and I recommend them uh, for mixing. So yeah, silicone spatula, you can pick those up at your local Dollar Tree or on Amazon or anywhere that silicone cake spatulas are sold. Well, my name is Vu Lee. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.